Hello everyone, I am Gérald Fonroy. I created the Geolabs company 14 years ago in 2007. We consider ourselves as experts in open source solution development and support. And I am very glad to be here today online for this Phosphor G 2021 to present to you the MapMint oriented, service oriented GIS platform. The main goal of this GIS platform is to simplify your day to day work consisting in publishing maps online. For such purpose, MapMint provides tools making you able to concentrate on your work and not on coding anymore. To do so, we are relying on the existing Open Geospatial OGC web services. The most important one in the MapMint platform is the web processing service, WPS. Indeed, for us, everything can be seen as a process. Meaning, for instance, that even the dynamic HTML content is resulting of a WPS execution. When I say everything is a process, I mean almost everything is a process. We use the dedicated web services listed here to spread the data. To name them, the web feature service, WFS, the web map service, WMS, the web coverage service, WCS, and web map type service, WMTS. So how do we offer such a set of services? Well, by combining the following open source software. The Zoo project is used as a WPS server, or as we will see at the end of the presentation, the OGC API processes and server implementation. Then we use the map server and the map cache softwares to make your data available through WMS, WFS, WCS, and WMTS. The OpenLayer JavaScript library is used to display and interact with online maps. And also, we are using LibreOffice to produce various kinds of uh, documents. Actually, there are much more softwares included in the platform, but let us continue and we will name them as we will name them in a few slides. So, in MapMint, as in other SDI, you have two different kinds of user interfaces. The first one on the, presented on the left hand side on the slide for, for the administrator of the application. People that are having the right to configure, publish and modify the, the available application. Then there is on the right, presented on the right hand side, the public user interface that lets the end user and authorized ones interacting with the published application. In the next slide, we will show you, we will briefly present the four basics administration modules, the dashboard, the distiller, the manager, and the publisher. They are basically the one required to only publish a map application. Then you will, we will uh, see, we will introduce you the advanced modules like the georeferencer, the table module, the importer module, and the indicator. These are the modules, administration modules, that you use for doing more than only presenting maps online. So let's first start with the first administration module, which is a dashboard. It provides, first of all, it provides an overview of your setup. It lets you manage your symbols and your favorites SRS, Special Reference System SRS. It lets you see and edit global settings and also manage your user, users and organize them as groups. The second administration module is the distiller. It lets you manage, convert and process your data remotely. You can access number of GEDAL tools available as web services from here. But there is also something new. Indeed, we are offering the capability, the access to our few toolbox application. They are now available directly from the distiller, meaning that you can run any of the available or few toolbox application for processing remote sensing images remotely. As we did for the Orpheo toolbox application, we did for Saga GIS, which means that we also offer access to the Saga GIS application from the distiller giving you access to various kind of processing offered by Saga GIS. Now, let's go to the next basic module, which is the manager. It lets you organize and manage your layers as maps, 
you can create, save, and manage maps in such a way that your layer will look great in the final application. You have different options to define the way, the way your layer will be displayed from your final application. You have a specific one, which we call the timeline. It basically means that you can produce multiple classifications for a single layer. This layer will then be shown as having multiple steps or multiple classifications. So here we presented the form, we present the form used to define such a style, and here we see it in action. More than uh, 70 layers produced as one and used from the Calfonchi application. Obviously, we do the same for the raster layers, even if the handling and the configuration is a bit different. Here, here is a Landsat 8 uh, 2017 and the same location in shown for 2016. The final basic administration module is the publisher. It lets you configure and publish your final application. Here you can define your application metadata, the base layer you are willing to use. The, you can list the, layer, the layers that will be activated per default. You can set the default extent or also the activated tools which are usually corresponding to a WPS service or a MapMint module. Here are a few examples of the resulting published applications, including at the bottom right, the Cedisium JavaScript library that has been used as a 3D client to display the layer from, the, from MapMint published project in combination, in combination with other datasets, such as 3D tiles in that example. To be complete about the capability offered by the publisher, you can restrict, you can also restrict access to the web services associated with your published project by setting up the OWS security software that will act as a security proxy, ensuring that only allowed IP addresses or user can access the data. This has been tested with various uh, client uh, applications, such as for the open source software QGIS, but it has also been tested with proprietary software, which was the first target of this development. Still from the publisher, you have also the capability to publish web applications, final applications that will uh, be able to display planet layer, base layers, planet base layers that you have access to. So here is the configuration, the configuration user interface from the administration. For the, from the administration interface, and then here you have the same. Uh, you have the uh, you have a screenshot of how it should look like from the final application. Sorry, as I told you earlier, the publisher lets you decide which tool will be available within the client user interface. With MapMint, you have now the capability to integrate your own tool by creating what we call MapMint module. It is a combination in, uh, of JavaScript and uh, WPS implementation. So for instance, here uh, in this screenshot, we have an integrated tool making the end user capable to interact with the R services implemented by the client from the published application. Now, let's have a look at the more advanced administration modules we were referring to in introduction, starting with the georeferencer. Well, it's a basic user interface that lets you georeference your raster data online and which is accessible from the distiller in case your raster data requires to be georeferenced. Another advanced module is the indicator one, which lets you cross data from different sources. One should be geographic data and the other one be of any kind, such as an Excel file, for instance, until it is supported by the GEDAL library. From this new data, you can then configure and view, uh, configure a view, a graph, and a report associated with. In here, in the here, in the screenshot, you can see how it may look like on the client side with the report, the report, the graph, and the table shown on top of the map. Now, an important advanced administration module in the table is the table one. It lets you configure and grant access to some user data, to some user to data stored in that uh, dedicated PostgreSQL database. 
the data can be geographic or non-geographic. For a given data table, you will define a view, meaning that the way the table will be displayed, which column should be shown, and so on. Then you will define an addition workflow, which may have multiple step, steps, and in which you will define whom will have the right to write which field at a given step. And then you can associate a report. You can associate a report. This report can be associated with the whole table or a single entity from the data set. This module also track history of the modification to an edited data set, but I think it's outside the scope of this presentation. With the administration tables module come another important tool, the mapmin for me Android application. The name mapmin for me stands for mapmin for measure and evaluation. mapmin for me can be used to record data on the field with or without internet connectivity. As you can see down the slide, I want to thank the five mentors and the five students for the work on led during this year Google Summer of Code period and also Google for its ongoing support to open source software and especially the MapMint one. Here is an old screenshot, but still it illustrates the fact that from the table client user interface, you can not only create new geometries or use existing ones, but you can also create new ones by combining and processing them with the exposed WPS services. You know, sometimes user needs to integrate data that are stored in a non-trivial format, such as the one presented in this screenshot. The importer administration module is integration of such kind of exotic data. When it, come to, when it comes to integration with the other web application, nowadays, it is commonly required to expose an open API. As the mapping platforms rely on the Zoo project for every processing service, it means that these services are also available through the OGC API processes. And you can see here a traditional Swagger UI, or at least a small part of it. This last slide is to inform you that you can now set up mapping on your own server by using the binary Docker image automatically published on Docker Hub by using GitHub Action. You should be able to find it by uh, searching for Geolabs mapping name. So the presentation of the mapping product is now over, so let's talk about the next step. The first next step should be to publish a Docker image for every single OS Geolive release to give the opportunity to select specific version of the software depending on your application purposes. Document the JavaScript API exposed to be used when implementing a new MapMint module. Integrate a short how to use the MapMint from Docker. Provide more complex MapMint module examples. Create videos demonstrating the capability of the MapMint UI administration user interface. MapMint is available on GitHub, so please give it a try and don't hesitate to report any issue you may find on it, in it, and contrib or contribute your code back to the repository. Before finishing the presentation, I want to thank Venkatesh Raghavan and Raja Chinde for their continuous support, helping in this year Google Summer of Code mentoring and other Tremedius contributions. To conclude, I want to thank the Code Company from Ireland for actively using the MapMint product and uh, continuously asking for new development of it, as the Calfoncier Company from France do. So this is it for me. If there is any, if there is any question, I will be happy to answer them. And I hope everybody will have a great first 4 Hello, uh, welcome to the stream, uh, Gerald. Thank you so much for the insightful presentation. It was really nice. First of all, I wish to apologize for the uh, issues, technical issues. You know, it's Murphy's law. I suddenly lost the sound and it was not coming in video. So sorry for that. Sorry to all the participants. But uh, 
yeah it was a very interesting presentation and so there is a question from the participants uh, it is is there any integration with mobile applications and i'm very happy to uh, tell about map mapment for me but i would uh, give this stage to you for more explanation well uh, actually as i try to present during my uh, talk was that we have uh, an embedded application named mapment for me mapment for measure and evaluation which is an Android uh, application you can take on the field to record data with or without any internet connectivity. <laughs> I don't know if it answers the question. Okay, uh, yes. So I have a question and I like not a question. I would like, actually I would want you to tell us more about the Google Summer of Code projects. So what were the contributions mostly? And what are the data sets uh, which we can use in MapMint platform for the processing? So actually, when you are accessing the binary Docker image on Docker Hub, you should see a short documentation on how to set up everything to be ready to run MapMint uh, using a uh, very basic uh, North Carolina data set. And uh, you can use to start publishing your uh, online uh, web map application. So basically to find the data uh, by uh, following the documentation available online, you shall be able to use uh, ready to use data set. Okay. Uh, I have one more question and it is related to the OGC API processes. So what are the upcoming uh, objectives with respect to implementing OGC standards in the existing mapment architecture? Actually, as I tried uh, again to present during my uh, talk, was that uh, the MapMint product is 100%, uh, almost 100% based on uh, the Zoo project, so the WPS engine, we implemented back in 2009. And uh, actually, this uh, processing engine is automatically exposing your services as WPS resources or uh, OGC API processes. So basically, it means that from a running MapMint instance, until you, uh, when you have uh, configured your uh, OGC API processes to be exposed to the public, which means, for instance, in, you, in case you are using the, doc, the binary Docker image, then it means that you all the existing services, so more than uh, 700 for uh, a basic zoo project setup, so probably more than 800 services are ready right out of the box to be used as WPS services or OGC API processes. Actually, this uh, OGC API processes was very useful because it was uh, acquired by one of our uh, projects that was mainly linked to another uh, application which has nothing to do with GIS. Mm -hmm. And it was complicated to show them any XML files. So we took advantage of this OGC API processes support, which is, uh, let's say, de facto available within any MapMint instance. OK, yes, that's very interesting. And I do not see any more questions in the venue chat. So great. Thank you again for your presentation and my apologies for the technical issues and good luck with the upcoming work. Thank you. Have a great Thank first you. Thank you. Have a good day ahead.